Hey there, I'm Robin from Fu Events, and in this video, I'm going to show you how the Fu Events admin area looks and give you a better understanding of how Fu Events works. Um, to speed things along, I've set up a cool admin demo area, which is just a WordPress website, and I've installed WooCommerce and the Fu Events plugins. So let's head over to the dashboard and get started. Cool. So, as you'll see, standard WordPress website, the only difference is in the menu, we have a Fu Events uh, tab over here which displays the foo events uh, menu options so let's start by looking at the settings so these are the foo events settings that come uh, mostly built in with the main foo events plugin but if you have uh, pdf tickets or seating or the calendar installed you'll have these extra tabs at the top over here so to start off let's look at the license option when you first buy your foo events uh, license you'll need to enter it over here and this will make sure you receive automatic updates every time we release an update if you bought it in Envato, you can do the same over here. We then have the general options. These are just standard options. Uh, they're built into to the main plugin and uh, they're just little nuances that uh, change the way Foo Events works on your site or how it displays information. Uh, we then have the terminology options. Uh, so, for example, if you are an academic institute and you don't have attendees, you have students, you can change the terminology uh, right over here without having to do translations and so on. And we, we've covered the basic options that uh, people commonly ask for. You can also change these on an individual event level, which is pretty handy. We then have the ticket design options. These are just the defaults, so you can change the ticket design uh, or, or the colors and uh, images used on your tickets for an individual event. Um, but this just sets up the defaults in case you, you, know, you use the same uh, colors and, and graphics for all your different tickets. Then have the PDF tickets option. These are, you know, you've got to enable it here. You can choose to display the, the PDFs in the My Account section as little download links. You can either send uh, just a generic text email with a PDF attached, or you can send uh, one of our HTML ticket emails as well as a PDF ticket. So you can, you can set that here and there's a few other options. Um, in the seating options, you can choose the default colors of the tickets, match them to your brand. And if you're using the Foo Events calendar, there's a number of options here that you can use, including changing the theme of your calendar to, to a different style. And then uh, if you're not familiar, we have uh, ch free check-ins apps for iOS and Android. These allow you to check in your attendees at your events, so at the entrance, for example. And here you can actually change the name of the app, the logo and the color scheme and make it your own. So when, when people see the app, it'll look like your own brand. And how this works is the first time you log into the app, um, it'll pull these settings and thereafter it'll always look like your brand so um, pretty pretty handy option and what's also pretty uh, popular is the ability to determine what events get pulled into into the app so you can either show all events by default you can choose specific events over here or you can make it that the uh, app only shows events for the user that's logged in so you know when you create a product uh, or an event uh, you can set the author of that product event and this option will make it that only that user's uh, events come through which is very handy if you've got multiple locations and, and you want to limit which events pull through you can use uh, the users to do so and then the integration tabs for any third-party integration so google maps um, our zoom meetings and webinars which are essentially our virtual events and then eventbrite which is used with a calendar so, uh, you know, our help center covers all of these in like a lot of detail. Um, so head over to help.freeevents.com if you want to uh, drill down into to, uh, more detail on some of the settings. But for the most part, they're pretty self-explanatory and, uh, you know, pretty easy to, to configure uh, as needed for your event. Next up, we're going to look at the products. So I've set up four products uh, for this demo. One is a conference. Um, it's a standard single day conference that you'd sell a ticket for. The next is a multi-day conference. And what that means is it's a conference that spans over more than one day. So most conferences are two or three day conferences. And what this one does is it makes it possible to manage the attendees access to the event on each day. So each day you can check them in separately. Um, which is pretty handy also for music festivals and so on that span over multiple days. We then have the booking demo. This uses the Foo Events Bookings plugin. This is you know, very similar to a single day event. The difference is instead of uh, the event only being available on one day, it might be available on different dates and at different times. So if you, um, if you have a swimming pool, for example, a public swimming pool and people need to book a slot that they'd like to, to attend the pool, the swimming slot, 
um, they could do so using the, the booking option. It's also great for classes, courses, um, services. So then we have the seating uh, demo, which is essentially a, a single day event where the customer is able to choose the seat that they would like to book. So uh, let's get started and have a look at the conference. Right, so for the most part, this is a standard WooCommerce product. You have your title, you have a description, uh, you have categories on the right, tags, you can set your product image, you can use a gallery, um, and then you have your uh, standard WooCommerce product data options. So for this example, we've made it a variable product, which uses a standard WooCommerce of variations. Um, and this is used to create different ticket types. So we've got a VIP, a delegate, a standard, and a student ticket. And if we go look on the front end, you can have a, a look how this has been implemented. Um, the delegate comes at its own price and has its own stock. The standard, a little bit cheaper. Students are free, there's only 380 spots. And then VIP, it's, it's 700 and it's a little bit, uh, a little bit more limited. So this is dependent on your event, but I, you know, I'd like to show you the ticket type um, as it is quite a handy feature and can be used in very various ways. What is important to note with variations is you do need to uh, select downloadable and virtual. Um, and the reason for this is whenever a ticket is sold with free events, it's only actually generated when the order is marked as complete. This is to ensure only paid orders generate tickets. Um, if you don't set it as uh, downloadable and virtual, uh, it'll be perceived as a physical good, which means the order is only completed when the good is delivered to the customer. So for virtual uh, items, you know, you skip that step and automatically when payment comes through, it's automatically completed, uh, which will make sure your tickets are generated and sent. Then uh, next up, we're going to go to the actual event settings. These are settings added by Foo Events. So the first thing you do is, you know, select it, uh, yes, over here, saying it's a product, uh, this product is an event. And then you will go through each of these settings and set them as needed for your event. And for the most part, they, they self-explanatory. This is a single day event. So we set the date and time, uh, the location, time zone, uh, all the standard settings you'd expect to see for an event. Um, thank you page text, uh, event details, tab text, you can add your own here. And then at the bottom, there's a few uh, more advanced options, um, but most of them are kind of optional. So the main ones I'd look at off the bat is to capture the attendee's full name and email address. If you don't do that, uh, you'd have to use the purchaser name and email address, and then you can capture their phone number, um, company name and designation. If you want to capture more uh, customized options, so say dietary requirements or t-shirt sizes, you can use custom attendee fields, which is a plugin uh, that, that we, that's available on our website. And here you can create any uh, custom fields. You can choose uh, text, text area select, checkbox, radio, country, date, time, email, URL, numbers, alphabet, alphanumeric. And uh, this is very handy for you to, to capture information specific for your event and your customers. And this will be displayed on the checkout page for each uh, separate in, uh, attendee. And then scrolling down, um, some of these options or most of these options are for booking and seating. So I'm going to skip over them for now, but right at the bottom here um, are a few options to include information in the WooCommerce order emails. You know, Foo Event sends its own ticket, which is its own custom email that we, we build. But if you'd like to include some of your events and attendee information in uh, your new order emails, you can do so over here. Okay, next we got the ticket settings. So here you can choose the theme that you'd like to use. The theme changes the appearance of your ticket. Um, there's a whole bunch of them on our website that are free. You can download them and upload them to your site. And uh, this just changes the look of the, the ticket email. You can also choose the logo, header image, and you can even change the uh, subject email, uh, subject of the email, which is pretty handy. So this is a conference. So I just said conference confirmation, but you could call it ticket. You could uh, you know, put a, a longer message here. It really depends on your event and, and what you need to, to say. You can add additional text to the email body. You can change the colors of the ticket email. And then scrolling down, these options uh, essentially let you choose what to include in your, in your ticket email. So we'll go through a few of them. Uh, display the purchase or attendee ticket details. Display custom attendee details on ticket. Those are the custom fields that we generated. Um, display an add to calendar option on the ticket and how it should behave is, is determined over here. That's very handy. Um, you want to include an ICS file to the ticket email, which is great if they want to add it to the calendar uh, 
as well. Display date and time on the ticket, barcode on ticket. It says barcode, but that's barcode or QR code. Uh, we support both. You can, do, you can choose that in the uh, ticket settings, in the, in the global ticket settings. Uh, price on tickets, and then if you're using booking deeds, bookings, uh, you, can, you can include a chair. And then lastly, uh, make sure this one's always uh, enabled. If you, if you do need to email your tickets, make sure it's enabled and that'll ensure that the tickets do get emailed to your attendees. You can add a footer to the PDF and the P PDF. Um, you can add text to the PDF email as a uh, PDF that's attached to the email there as well. Right, next uh, you can override the event terminology. This is similar to what we looked at earlier. The only difference is it'll only be applied for this particular event. We have custom uh, fields, which we already looked at. Uh, seating, I'm going to skip this for now because we're going to have a closer look at it a little bit later. And then event export. This is very popular. So this includes in a CSV file, all the attendees uh, that signed up for the event. And this will include their name, company designation, the custom attendee fields, the time that they checked in or checked out, and some basic order information. So it's everything you kind of have on the attendee. And what people often do with this is they pull it into a spreadsheet, which can be handy for, for uh, you know, having a hard copy of who's coming to the event, or they'll pull it into a CRM system, so this is MailChimp, and uh, use it uh, to, to send emails to the attendees. So a very handy way of extracting this information from your from your site. Then we have the stationary builder. This uh, this essentially lets you build customized PDFs um, that can be printed for your event. And uh, these can be used for tickets, badges, uh, wristbands, or even certificates. And we support a number of different formats with uh, the amount of badges, or tickets displayed on each page. And um, you can build it using this drag and drop interface. So you can, you know, for a, a ticket, you can add your logo, you can add some custom text, uh, you can add event information, ticket information, the attendee's name, details, and even the custom attendee fields. And when you're done, save changes, hit print to items, and it'll generate PDFs for all your attendees that, that look like this. You can also use these settings here to, to do it only for specific tickets or attendees or orders. This is very handy uh, you know, if you want to create name badges for your events or um, certificates that you print out and give to your attendees. You then have event expiration. Um, this allows you to expire events automatically. So if you create you know, a large number of events and you don't have to manually go and uh, change them to draft or delete them, you can set the date of the event here. And uh, in the global settings, you can choose that either the event must disappear from the front end of your website or uh, a message can be displayed saying it's no longer possible to book for this event and you can customize that message over here and it'll disable the add to cart options and so on for that event. You then have ticket expiration options so uh, you can either use a fixed date so you can say this ticket's uh, expired for this event any tickets will expire on a specific day or you can say elapsed time so that's the time from the day that the ticket was purchased um, say it's five days five days later the ticket will lo no longer be valid so if you scan it a message will pop up saying you know this is an expired ticket um, it just makes it a bit easier to manage tickets and ensure that only valid tickets are checked in at your event and then lastly booking expiration this one's very handy for obviously uh, you need the free events bookings plugin to use it but what it does is um, any booking dates that are passed will automatically expire and will no longer be displayed on your site so it just stops someone from booking a date that you know is from two days ago and they didn't realize or maybe they got their years mixed up and they booked something from 2019 um, it just removes those automatically and only displays dates that they can actually book and then lastly event integration so this is for our virtual events it's our zoom integration that allows you to create uh, meetings or webinars so this works in two ways you can either create a meeting or webinar uh, automatically or you can create one in zoom and then link it up over here these settings make make it pretty easy to do all of that and it also integrates with free events bookings which we'll, we'll have a look at in a, a few minutes but Ultimately, these, this allows you to configure how uh, the Zoom integration must work. So this is the, the standard conference, single day event. This is a very common type of event with few events. Uh, but I think next up, let's have a look at the multi-day event. So the multi-day event is essentially the same as the conference, just has a, small, uh, a few small differences that uh, change the behavior of the check-ins. 
So if we scroll down and we go to the event type under event settings, you'll see here it says select days. That's the event type. We also have sequential days, which is a multi-day option. So select days lets you choose the number of days that the event takes place and you can select the date of each of those days. So this is a four day event and it takes place on these days. Um, this is handy if it's not sequential day. So if your event is, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, those are sequential days. You can use the sequential option, choose the, the Thursday and say it repeats for four days. Um, but if it's on different dates, use select days and uh, it displays here. And what this will do is when a person arrives on the first day, they'll check in. And then when they arrive on the second day in the app, you'll change it to day two, and then you can manage check-ins for day two. So it allows them to have multiple check-ins, one separate one for each day. And we've seen tons of use cases uh, for this where it's been used in different ways, but uh, ultimately it's uh, multi-check-ins, you know, rather than multi-day. Uh, especially because with the event terminology, you can change the word day to anything. So you could call it tokens and a person buys an event and they get 10 tokens that they can redeem or check in um, and yeah you know it's it's really up to you to be creative and and find different use cases for for how this works for you but ultimately similar to a standard event just multiple check-ins um, get added and this is supported in the app it's included on the the ticket it'll display information around this so um, pretty pretty seamless next we're going to have a look at the bookings uh, demo so this is again similar to the conference for the most part, except here instead of a single day, um, you're going to have multiple dates, and on each of those dates we're going to have different time slots that a person can book. And this could be for a service. You know, if you are a salon and you're selling, uh, you know, salon services, say haircuts, they can choose uh, the date and a slot for. Uh, say a particular hairdresser each hairdresser can have their own slots and you just choose the one that's available and you pay up front so if we scroll down and you go to booking settings um, let's, let's close these so it's a bit easier to look at so we have uh, three different slots that people need to book and each of these slots is available on different dates so perhaps let's go to the front end and see what this looks like just give you a better idea so if you look here, you'll see the person would select the date. So these are all the dates that are available for the slots. And then they choose the slot. So in this case, they want to, let's say we want to go to the evening slot. You'll then uh, choose a variation. It works with variations. You can, you know, have different packages, basic, full package. Um, you know, if you're doing uh, hikes, you know, you can include dinner, lunch. Um, if it's a salon, you can say add a pedicure or manicure or something. But for us, uh, it's just basic options, it's different prices that they, they display. So back to bookings, we have a date and we have slot. So if we go to the admin area, and we scroll down to booking settings, you'll see it has three slots. And then for each of these slots, I've said what dates are they available. Um, you know, they don't have to be the same date. So, you know, the morning slot, perhaps uh, some mornings you know, you have meetings or so on. So you only offer uh, offer it on a few days, that's fine. You know, where there's uh, overlap, it'll show both, uh, you know, consolidated in the drop down list. So it'll show the third and the sixth, as well as the first and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth. Um, but if you have strange data that aren't part of the other ones, like say April, it'll show that one still in the, the date drop down as well as all the other ones. Um, and this is pretty handy. This, this means you can set up your, uh, the availability of your slots based on you know, whatever you offer. So if, uh, if certain slots aren't available on certain days, if you closed on public holidays, um, if you want to add bonus slots, you know, if time becomes available and perhaps there's a, a, a late night slot or an early morning slot that becomes available, you can add these as you need to. Um, and you can also just, you know, it's easy to manage in that, uh, you know, it might, the first one might take a little bit of work adding all your dates, but thereafter you can just duplicate it uh, for each slot and just change the slot name and time. Um, so it's, it's pretty quick and easy, but the amount of uh, granular control it gives you over your dates and slots is, is quite incredible. All right, and then this information will all be include, included uh, in the ticket um, that's sent to the attendees. So make sure to enable it over here. 
and then you can also control some of the behavior of bookings uh, in these settings under the event settings so uh, you can display the booking slots and dates on the product pages by default those two drop downs will display on the checkout screen along with the attendee information so if you check it here it shows on the product pages and then you can do things like uh, hide the time in the slot drop down perhaps you don't need to display it there hide the stock availability notice um, show stock availability in the drop down so it'll be in brackets the number of uh, spots available for that slot show out of stock booking dates and uh, hide the booking date in the combined drop down so that's an interesting one um, if if all your slots are on one single day so let me show you if you go to booking settings and let's set all of these to be on the 1st of november and in event settings you have the default slot to date option so this is the option that supports it um, this will then consolidate because it's all on the same date you don't really need to select date separately to the slots uh, because you'd just be choosing the 1st of november and then you'd have to choose from another drop down um, a little quirk we built into it is this will automatically consolidate it into a single drop down option so it'll save your customers having to choose two and the inverse is uh, the same as well if you have only one slot with multiple dates it'll do the same it'll merge it into a single drop down so your customers don't have to to select multiple ones and then just to give you a better idea of how this looks when you follow through if you go to the cart You'll see the um, dates and slots are displayed here as well and if you proceed to the checkout screen you can then change it here on an attendee level as well and back to products um, next I'm going to show you and lastly I'm going to show you the seating example um, this is very similar to the conference the main difference is uh, it includes a seating chart where your customers can choose which seat they would like to book so if you go to event seating event settings choose seating you can then go to the event seating option and here you can create different rows with seats available on them and link them to variations so to make it a little bit simpler let's look at it on the front end first so over here your customer would choose um, the type of seat so let's say it's a VIP seat they'll then be presented with the option to choose their seats so here they can select the ones they want to book select seats It'll show they've selected two um, and then they can proceed with the, the booking. If they choose standard, it'll show different seats based that are linked to that specific variation. And then the same would happen with student. It'll only show the seats that have been linked to that specific variation. So let's have a, another look at the back end. Here we go to the event seating tab. And here, um, as we saw on the front end, we have three rows with 15 seats available for the VIP variation. We have six rows uh, with 15 seats available for the standard variation. And then for the student uh, variation, we have three rows over here. You can see this visually. There's our VIP row, our, sta our standard and our student rows at the bottom over there. And then we also have options to block off seats. So if you wanna block off, say, these three, you select them. And then you can say block seats apply and I'll block them off. This is handy with COVID if you need to block off seats, you know, keep spacing, um, separate uh, uh, people, add a bit of space between them. You can also uh, make seats unavailable. So this, uh, this will look like they've been booked already, in other words. And then you can add aisles to the, uh, to the right of any of these seats, similar to what we did in the middle over here. And that's seating. Next, we're going to head over to Foo Events Tickets and take a closer look at the tickets generated when a customer purchases access to an event. So if we go to the ticket section, you'll see it lists out all the, the tickets that have been sold. These are just a few examples that I set up for this demo. And if we open one of them, this is the admin area uh, view of a ticket. So you'll see it has the name, uh, the details, uh, in this case it's a seating uh, event, so we have the seating information as well as the custom attendee fields. And then here we have more general options or more general information such as the variation, um, the events details, the order details, as well as the purchaser details. And if we scroll down just a little, you'll see um, a log of all the check-ins that occurred for this particular ticket. Um, 
this is essentially the, when the, ch the check-in status has changed from the default. And uh, if you go to the export settings, which we had a look at a little bit earlier, and uh, you export all the attendee information, pretty much all of this will be included, as well as the actual check-in statuses, which is pretty handy for, for tracking. We then have the report section. This, uh, you know, this is an admin demo, so we don't have a lot of data to, to look at. But um, as you can see here, you can set the date range for a report, and then you're able to see the um, net revenue, gross revenue, tickets sold, check-ins, uh, check-outs, and every, uh, pretty much everything you need just to get a glance at uh, how, how your event fared over that period. And then lastly, We'll have a quick look at the ticket theme so for each event you can set a different ticket theme and what a ticket theme does is it determines the appearance of your ticket the html ticket so it's essentially an html template for your ticket email and we have loads of free ones on our website for events.com you can also we have a starter one which is very basic that you can modify to make uh, make your own if you need more details, please visit our help center. It's help.freeevents.com. We have loads of uh, resources available, including use case documents, which break down different types of events and how they've been configured. Um, also visit our demo section, which is demo.freeevents.com. Um, there we have tons of different events that we've configured to illustrate how free events can uh, work for you. And if you need help setting up your event, uh, similar to one of our demos, just get in touch and uh, we'll, we'll explain what you need to do. Um, and also, if, if you'd like to get access to an admin demo, such as one that I've shown you, get in touch with us. We'll send you a link to uh, a pre-configured one and you can kind of just browse it and get an understanding, play around with the settings um, to see how it works. And if even it's a good fit for you, this is the best way to find out. So do get in touch and uh, yeah, thanks for watching the video. Goodbye.